come from a fully Muslim background and I got saved when I was 20 years old by Jesus Christ. So here's my testimony. Since I was five years old, I was so scared to sleep alone. And my parents never believed me, I think because they thought I was just lying so I could sleep next to them. I just continuously had really bad, scary dreams all the time, all the time. My fear of being alone in a room got so bad that I would start seeing faces and you'd think that these things would happen at night but they were actually happening throughout the day in daylight. I would see like shadows or silhouettes and actual colored transparent faces in my windows, in my, on my balcony. So every night I would wait for my parents to fall asleep and I would take one pillow and one cover and just sleep right outside their door on the floor. So as soon as their alarm clock would ring in the morning, I would just take my stuff and sprint back to my room and pretend like I was sleeping. <laughs> and I did that every single night till I was 16 years old. It's not like it was just a fear in my mind, but like things would actually happen and dreams were there and visuals were there. Like it was not, it was just not good. And no one believed me. So growing up, my mom did teach me a lot about Islam and just the way to pray. And I did pray. I liked it. I loved God. I believed that there was one God because that's how I was grown up to believe. She did speak to me about Jesus, but the only mentions that she would say is that he is just another prophet. Um, sure, he was special and he did great things that were different than others, but he's definitely not the son of God. And for some reason as a kid, I found that a bit easy to believe because in my head I was like, yeah, of course he's not a God. He's a human. <laughs> of course in Islam, it's like, if you believe otherwise you're no it's not you're just not gonna be okay <laughs> so i did pray um the muslim way for a few years but i never saw prayer as a link between you and god or like a relationship between you and god as a conversation it was more like when i wanted to request something i can ask for it and hopefully you'll be granted and that was about it. I think over time I just saw it as a task to do throughout the day. It wasn't really like I wanted to keep up with the relationship. It was more like when I wanted something small or I wanted a new toy, I would just ask for it and ask for these small things, which is there's nothing wrong with, but I missed the whole point of actual prayer and I didn't have that true motivation or true motive behind it. So fast forward, when I was 13 years old, my family and I, we moved to Saudi Arabia. Soon enough there, I got into a serious relationship, I would say, um, at just 13 years old. And it was not good. It was full of sin, whether it is mentally, physically, emotionally. But of course, at the time, I was absolutely blinded by this idea of just being with someone and just hanging out and having fun. My definition of a relationship came purely from what I watched or what I read, so like from books or Disney Channel or movies. So it was definitely not biblical. And keep in mind, I'm still a, a Muslim kid at that point. <laughs> it was more like uh, a relationship didn't seem bad for me. It just seemed something cute. I remember throughout the relationship, I would pray for the opportunities to do sinful things in that relationship. I would kneel down and I would request all these bad things. Not good. So imagine I'm literally in my room on my knees and I'm praying to God for the opportunity to do sinful things. The relationship went on for another three years before my parents found out about everything. I got in trouble. I got locked up at home for a few weeks actually. I had to miss school, I couldn't go out obviously, I had everything taken away from me. When I did start going back to school, I remember I had to get checked before leaving the house and get checked when I was entering the house. I'm not blaming my parents for this, I'm not blaming anyone for this. I think what I'm trying to say is that it's so important to understand and plant in yourself the fear of God in such a healthy way so that you know what to do and you know why things are wrong or when they feel wrong, why it is wrong. So because of all this, my parents wanted to protect me at all costs. So we picked up our stuff and we moved to another country. So when I did move, the person I was with completely ended their relationship because they didn't want to do anything to do with long distance. And I was in absolute denial mode. I was just basically so blinded by what, by what I wanted their relationship to be that I did not accept the breakup. So I basically lived for the next few years being in a relationship with someone that was not in a relationship with me. I mean, you can't be in a one-sided relationship. It just doesn't work out. Oh, I remember now, oh my gosh. 
at the time from how bad my denial mode was i i remember praying against god and telling him like just watch and see i'm gonna make this work oh my gosh i just remember this moment. i'm either gonna cry or laugh at myself right now but i would pray and just speak to god i'm like just wait and see even if you don't want this for me i have the power to do this all on my own it was such a lonely time but i didn't want to admit it to myself i didn't even want to ask help from people because i was afraid of what that help would do and i knew that that help would end like properly end the relationship from my side too so i kept my mouth shut i kept my heart shut and i was just miserable but i didn't even believe that i was miserable so all in all i chose a sinful relationship over my relationship with god every single day since i was 13 years old when i was 20 years old i started to feel like my soul was literally yearning for help i kept feeling like there was no good way out of what i've put myself through i was too afraid to ask for help because i knew that that would mean having to let go of my past seven years and that would mean a total waste i started to want to copy what other people my age were doing to solve their problems i remember the main thing i learned things from was tumblr and it was a very toxic platform for me i would see all these teenagers smoking or drinking to get rid of their problem i just wanted to copy that i think because i thought hey if it's working for someone else my age uh, this could probably work for me too so i tried smoking i tried drinking alcohol i was completely wrong about my theory those things did not help i was almost forcing myself to smoke and drink even though i didn't like the taste of anything or what it was doing to me if a few months have passed and i had met a new friends group and out of the friends group, I got close with one friend that I started to see every weekend. So one weekend, I thought that me and this friend were going to go out and just hang out like we always do. But that friend basically said that they can't because they're going to be at church all day. And I was like, uh, how could you be going to church in a Muslim country? Because I've never seen a church over here. But then I became curious as to what church actually looks like where I live. So my friend invited me the next weekend to attend. So the next weekend, I attended that church for the first time. I just wanted to see what it was about. I was so curious. So when I attended that church, it was in a big school hall and I found it so weird that anything religious is held in a school. But that's just the way it's done here because there are barely any church buildings. So at the beginning of the church service, there was worship and I found it so weird because at least in Islam, if you praise God with loud music, that's almost disrespectful. And I never knew there was anything such as praise. I, I didn't know that you could praise God. After worship, the preacher started to preach. I basically saw the preaching part as a motivational speech. So what I did is whenever the preacher is speaking, I would just filter out Jesus' name with just God in general. So two months passed by of me attending church and just filtering Jesus' name out. I was sitting alone in the service and the preacher was talking about how God can redeem time. I remember he said, if you feel like you've lost five years of your life, don't worry, just come to God and he'll add those five years back to your life. If you feel like you've lost six years of your life, don't worry, just come to God and he'll add those six years to your life. And then he went on to say, if you feel like you've lost seven years of your life, just don't worry, come to God and he'll add those years back to your life. In that moment when I heard the word seven years, it struck me like, because those are the seven years that I've been so afraid to lose and just put behind me because there was such a huge chunk of my life. At that point, they were almost half of my life. In that moment when he said seven years and that God could give it back even though you've messed it up, I was in absolute disbelief at how big God's love could be for you for him to do something like that. I remember I was just sitting like, like i think i froze and as i was trying to comprehend how big god's love is in that moment i felt god's love come down and just it came down from above and it just rested on my shoulders and it pushed down really really heavily and it's like my spirit from the inside knew that this weight or this pressure that you're feeling right now this is the love of god and I've never felt anything like that before. I didn't even know there was something called Holy Spirit. I didn't even know that God can come down to earth. 
I didn't even know that God could intervene. I didn't know any of those things, but in that moment, I literally felt it and my spirit knew or could indicate what that was. And it was so weird. Looking back now, it's beautiful, but at the time, in the moment, it was, it was really weird. <laughs> but I was crying on the inside because it was the first time that I experienced what God's love was. I went back home after church and I just felt weird. Not in my head. I felt weird, like my vision, my breathing, my mood, my personality, my body, everything felt so weird. It wasn't sickness, it was weird. I even had plans that night to go out with some friends, but I ended up cutting them short because I just wanted to go back home because I felt so weird. I went back home, I slept, I woke up the next morning and I felt happy. And the reason why I knew that I truly felt happy is because I've never felt this kind of happy in the past seven years. I felt new, I felt unblinded, I felt light. I still remember, okay, I'm about to cry because I can never say this part without falling out. But I still remember after I woke up that morning, I went downstairs that morning in my house and I saw my mom and my younger brother and it felt like I was looking at them for the first time in my whole life. I could see differently, their faces looked different, everything was different. I saw my younger brother, I, I think he was seven at the time, I just looked at him and I just felt like I this is the, this is the first time I'm meeting my brother. I felt like I haven't seen my family, anyone, in years. I have no idea what was going on. All I knew is that I felt happy and unblinded and I felt and I experienced that unblindingness. I basically got saved overnight and at the time I had no idea. I wasn't even a Christian. I didn't even believe that Jesus is a savior at all. I didn't even believe he's the son of God. I did not even say that I'm a Christian. I did not even confess of Jesus to be God. I did not even do anything. I did not even know what the Holy Spirit was. I didn't even know what getting saved meant. I didn't even know that there was anything called getting saved. <laughs> it was just so beautiful that Jesus saved me even before I believed in him. I didn't even know him. All I knew was his name and that he was a prophet and he did some miraculous stuff. Like I didn't even know anything. <laughs> And I'll be honest, it took me a good one or two years to fully believe in him. But let me clarify, after I got saved, I devoted myself to him, but I did not believe in him. And what I mean by that is that I, I realized what had happened. I realized that I have changed because of this religious way and this Jesus Christ, but I did not believe who he was. I did not believe that he was the son of God. I did not believe that he was anything but a prophet at that point, still, for the next one or two years. And as a kid, I clearly remember being told you could get killed if you declare that Christ is Lord. So right now, it's been five years since I got saved and I feel like my life just began since I was 20 years old. My parents don't know that I've been a Christian for years. I hide it every single day. And it's really tough because I just, I just want to live loudly for him so bad but I can only share it with strangers and not with my family that I love the most. But it's not easy having to tell them. It's really got to be planned out and I'm definitely going to tell them in due time whenever God wants me to. It's going to be the hardest thing ever because my parents have sacrificed so much for me that I don't want to end up breaking their hearts over this. The reason why I wanted to share with you guys a lot of my backstory is because I wanted to show you and explain what God really saved me from. And a lot of you may ask, how am I posting this and no one of my family knows about this yet? I honestly don't know. I think I've just had enough of being quiet and not being able to share the good news that I just wanted any kind of outlet to, to just share. Um, if there's one thing you want to take from this, I really hope you take this one main thing. Our sin might last for years, but our devotion to him in a moment could change everything. And that's exactly what happened to me.
like this. 